E te whānau, nau mai, hoki mai anō ki tēnei o Waka Haurua, Māori and Pacifica Suicide Prevention uh, Research. Uh, nā ku anō te hōnere, ko kahu, uh, ki te whakatau i a koutou. Uh, te kai kōrero mō tēnei ata nō tērā o te raukura o Taranaki, a tōku whangaunga a nā, nā rupu Cameron. Uh, so I'm really pleased to have you all join us this morning for our, our next webinar. Um, and I introduce um, my whanaunga from Taranaki in Narupi, Kemo. Kia ora rā. Tēnā koutou. Kahu, um, thank, you. thank you for that introduction. And we'll, we'll just go straight into the presentation. Time is few. So, ko te te tuatahi he mihi aroha uh, ki ngā whānau whānui, uh, ngā whānau pani o tēnei kaupapa hohonu. He mihi mutunga kore tēnei ki a koutou. He mihi mutunga. Uh, <coughs> o te rā ko rātou ki a rātou, uh, te hunga mate ko tātou ki a tātou, ngā urupā waihotanga o rātou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, uh, tēnā tātou katoa. Um, I thought I would just start by giving a quick a uh, regional overview uh, in relation to Taranaki, and this is a rather interesting photograph. It's one of my favourites. But uh, the population here is um, 111,000 in 2013. It's been a slow, slow growth over the last 30 or so years. Taranaki is the 10th largest region out of 16 in Aotearoa, <coughs> and there's 2.6% of the country's uh, population reside here. There's 18,500 um, Māori, and we make up 14.9% of the Taranaki population. There's, um, Māori in this region can comp comprise 3% of the country's population. Yeah. Taranaki has, a, along with, you know, the national trend has a youthful Māori population. Uh, the 2013, the meeting in age was uh, 23 and a half years. Uh, so over half the Māori population in Taranaki is actually under 24 years of age. Um, Income-wise, the uh, lowest uh, form of income is um, for Māori is, in fact, self-employment. So there's very few of us who are self-employed. The main source of income is wages and salaries and benefits, the unemployment, uh, domestic purposes, um, invalids and sickness benefits trigger highly. The health profile, there are significant disparities, which include um, available uh, Hospitalizations, you know, avoidable, sorry, hospitalizations, um, cardiovascular disease, death uh, rate is higher here through lung cancer, chronic obstructive uh, pulmonary disease, diabetes, um, renal failure, and for the under fives, dental decay. And But I think the region uh, reflects national trends as well. Now, suicide in Taranaki, the Ministry of Health uh, report in 2020, uh, 8 to 12, uh, Taranaki averaged 13.4 per 100,000 um, successful suicides and the national average at that time was 11.6 uh, per 100,000 of population. So the coroner's office in um, 2007 to 15 uh, reported 127 su successful suicides in Taranaki. The highest year uh, was the 09 to 10 where there was 20. This was followed by 19 in the 14-15 um, years. And in that eight-year period, uh, Māori represented 19% of suicides. The self-harm hospitalisation rate for the 2012-15 um, to 15 period, 21% of those self-harms were Māori. So it's, um, it's a bit of a worrying picture. So a part of our approach was uh, genuine interest about how it is that people living in our own, you know, in their own homelands are deprived and struggling to survive and have horrendous health disparities, including a rather alarming, alarmingly successful suicide and self-harm rates. So jury talks about, uh, you know, the diaspora and there are other theories proposed by academics that point out uh, in this country and overseas, they point out the financial and material deprivation experienced by whānau uh, are firstly due to inequalities between Māori and non-Māori in education, health, justice and welfare systems, and secondly due to the unique factors that apply to Māori and the colonisation experience. 
Now, certainly, the Taranaki experience of colonisation is unique, and one aspect of that is that Taranaki lands were confiscated prior to the cessation of hostilities. And actually, the confiscations led directly to hostilities and another 20 years of war in this region. So there was over 40 years of active warfare. So, um, you know, in fact, the Waitangi Tribunal Report to Kaupapa Tuatahi 1996 maps out and directly connects loss of land to the subsequent impact of cultural, social, political, and economic marginalisation on cultural identity. So our project, <coughs> our project design was in four phases and we identified, um, I won't read the phases, I'm sure people who are listening can read as well. Um, the project design, four phases, and we identified three strategic platforms. Uh, and like Catherine, uh, last week, uh, we utilised the second Māori Task Force um, report on Māori Fano violence mode order, this Kruja. Uh, now, the first one was Dispel the Illusion. We aligned this with changing attitudes and barriers by creating positive opportunities for Māori community conversations about suicide and wellbeing, um, about the impacts of suicide, which were, and at the same time, we accompanied this with constant messages delivered from a Kaupapa Māori framework. The second platform uh, is Remove the Opportunity. We aligned this with access, this was about access, increasing Māori community awareness of risk factors, warning signs, uh, support agencies, etc. And alongside that was a Māori suicide uh, prevention education, well alongside that. The third uh, platform is, is the transformative practice. And this was aligned with training and development by um, increasing community capacity and capability through Māori and Indigenous Pacific workforce development research. So the Ranaho, um, the Kaupapa Māori, was a Kaupapa Māori project and we are region wide. And it was grounded upon the notion that Taranaki knowledge and information will support changes in our approach to life and our Fano relationships. There's a, quite a strong political element. So our project name, He Waipuna Kulupupu, originates from this Sokotoki and locates our work within an understanding of the context of colonisation and historical trauma. So this Sokotoki um, is applicable throughout Taranaki, but it has mainly been confined to the north, but it's now used throughout Taranaki. It's a unique descriptor for our mona. It's referencing it as uh, barren or impoverished. However, where there is water, there are people. Therefore, it is an ever bubbling pool of knowledge. Now, although plundered, it talks about although plundered by the pig, this is a reference to the coloniser, it will never cease to bubble uh, forth ideas, possibilities, and knowledge. It also contains a message of hope for us from our tūpuna uh, to persevere. In spite of the seemingly insurmountable odds, to carry on so that future potential may emerge. So understanding the context of Taranaki is critical to understanding what is happening in Taranaki. So tributes from throughout the world, including this country, are paid to Gandhi and Martin Luther King, and rightly so. But the tributes are for similar views and practices first carried out by Taranaki Māori 60 years before Gandhi. So the results of the government's criminality are that Taranaki has inherited um, the silence and denial of history that permeates this region. And it continues to this very day. We still, we do not have um, Māori representation on local government. We've paid a high price for a peaceful passive resistance movement. And uh, currently the New Plymouth District Council uh, has a white to the lands bill um, before Parliament. Uh, the final land grab and to try and squeeze out the last drop of uh, dollars from uh, the theft of the white to the lands. This is going on this, to this day. Um, 
So we have survived, uh, you can, and you can see the here from the earlier overview, the level of survival, but we have survived, but the casualty has been the quality of survival. Now, Maria uh, Yellow Horse Braveheart clearly describes the impact of historical trauma. And uh, you can see that in this, this quote. Um, you know, for us, it was uh, another let's dispel the illusion that's what, that what's causing the high rates of Māori suicide in Taranaki is a mystery. Let's dispel that illusion. This is not a mystery. So this is where the platforms I mentioned earlier were extremely important um, in relation to lifting the lid, the regional um, wānanga uh, that were held around safe conversations and exploring answers to questions. You know, answer, um, questions such as what is our cultural relationship to suicide? Uh, do we have one? You know, do we have a tradition of suicide in Taranaki? Um, is there a whakapapa to suicide? You know, if there is, what is it? Do we, do we, um, do Māori have a genetic predisposition to suicide? So how can Taranaki Kōrero safely about suicide? You know, they ask questions about where are our leaders on this issue? What are they saying about this issue? So, our first aid um, training uh, was run alongside all these wānanga. We could not, um, uh, you know, with a, a good conscience, uh, allow people to raise conversations in relation to Māori suicide in wānanga settings um, without leaving them with some skill development. In fact, they requested it. You know, and the reality was that, quite simply, um, if we want to change the nature of our communities, then we do need to change the nature of the conversations we're having with one another. And those uh, forums, the Lifting the Lid forums, was very successful uh, at, um, at doing that. So key informants, um, laid out a vast knowledge and understanding grounded upon our history, the impact of historical traumatic events, and also um, they courageously discussed what Professor Eduardo Duran in 2012 at Community Kōrero that were held in Taranaki, held here at Tutamuahine, and Professor Karina Walters uh, referred to as the spirit of suicide. Um, and the informers, they were, also, they were very clear about advising us and um, wanting the message uh, made clear in Taranaki that the very act of healing in itself is an act of resistance against oppression. The key informants were uh, concerned in relation to terminology that is being used and that there are specific Taranaki kupu and kupu throughout the Mōtri that um, quite clearly talks about what is happening. So terminology was raised consistently and the need for us to think deeply and carefully about kupu Māori used in regards to suicide. They said use the terms correctly. The essence of the word mate appearing in the, the description in relation to suicide, um, they felt that the actual impact is potentially minimised. And in fact, several um, informants talked about the word currently used is almost uh, making uh, something, it's almost a rebranding of something that was not uh, viewed um, as being um, particularly shameful or cowardly act if it was viewed in the entire context of a person's life. Um, but they have made comment about the rebranding. 
of uh, suicide. They also um, talk at length about Taranaki tikanga and knowledge about suicide, the uh, reclamation of Taranaki practices and concepts, in particular koha, reciprocity, as being Māori, that those tikanga are Māori strength-based practices and our empowerment approach. And we're encouraging the return of tikanga to the centre of whānau life to normalise it. That karakia, uh, whakatauki, waiata, pūrāko are not random. None of these things that are done in Taranaki and Māori settings are random. They are specific and for a reason. And they are clear that they are methods of teaching and instruction and are connected to the collective, as in the people, are connected to the collective, to history and creation. And these are not being um, normalised within our, our lives these days. They spoke about the marginalisation <coughs> of Taranaki knowledge in relation to suicide and um, spoke um, emphatically about the reclamation of Taranaki Mā Tauranga in relation in regards to relationships and interaction between collectives, that this is central to supporting the recovery of Taranaki Māori intellectual infrastructure in regards to suicide. That um, this, that part of this recovery must be done by reweaving and re uh, we re interconnecting our hapu and collectives. Um, they raised the issue of the statistics are not reflective of the true pitch of suicide in Taranaki in relation to Māori. And, um, you know, an example was given when, um, one given year, that what was known to the researchers and um, some of the participants said there were five other Tupapaku that had been returned to Taranaki from outside of the region. They belonged to Taranaki though. Uh, and those um, those were not considered part of those, those uh, statistics. And they also felt that the statistics were too generalised to provide, provide any meaningful understanding or much meaningful understanding in regards uh, to hapu and iwi. Um, informants also um, spoke at length that suicide, especially some of our, their older in, informants um, that were into their 50s and 60s, that uh, suicide was not a topic of conversation, uh, nor was it um, apparent uh, when growing up, that when there was a death, uh, it was usually spoken about in descriptive terms in relation to the manner of death. Um, and it would have appeared that apparently it was that it was just done without uh, without a judgment. Um, or they shot themselves. Or they hung themselves. That's what was said. It wasn't it was how the death happened. So informants also identified other behaviour such as family violence, um, sexual assaults, alcohol and drug abuse. Um, Neglect, physical abuse, and abandonment. And they also identified um, those issues and behaviours as potentially contributing towards suicide. They recognised that, that that they did recognise that they were learned behaviours, and some and that some whānau have been severely impacted by those behaviours. They spoke about the impact on future generations. Uh, further abandonment and shame, uh, in particular in relation to uh, the Christianising that's gone on here. The abandonment of uh, Māori children by Māori men, by Māori men. In fact, Sigurd Talk spoke at length about the abandonment of Māori children by Māori men, and they're uh, often left with Pākehā mothers without whakapapa or cultural support. And this was viewed as actually as quite abhorrent. And they called for this to be addressed at the highest levels of Māori leadership, the abandonment of um, our children. They spoke about rumoa and protective factors, and it's clear that um, 
there are some strong, uh, that Taranaki maintains some strong knowledge sources about healing uh, that was undertaken by our tūpuna and some of this knowledge has been uh, held in specific whānau. There is also the revitalisation of te reo and tikanga. It was felt that this will rejuvenate healing knowledge. So the Tohunga Suppression Act in 1907 uh, marginalised Taranaki experts in healing arts, especially in the sphere of mental and spiritual uh, well-being. We, the community's ability to recognise and address what those tohu is not as sharp as it was. It can be reclaimed though. And part of that is in relation to repositioning um, knowledge holding elders, and in fact, repositioning all elders to be protectors and to initiate cultural processes to pull people back into purposeful living. Now, it's only um, one of the main things that everybody talked about was to rebuild the village. That um, they all said it's possible. It's only impossible if we give up hope, but we need to rebuild our villages and stop talking about it. Um, stop talking about taking the village to raise a child, a big deal, uh, let's just do it. These, um, they talked about communities that did not, we did not require a police force and, and the current pathologising of Māori men um, needs to be addressed at the highest levels of Māori leadership again. And in Taranaki, um, they were talking that some of the key old, um, keynote um, informants talked about repositioning um, and spelling out to Taranaki Māori men what is expected of them and to reorientate themselves back to their homelands and whakapapa and back to the central, you know, the centrality of the whānau. And also, um, to point out in no uncertain terms to Māori men who whakapapa outside of this region, how we expect them to behave in our lands. So articulating a Taranaki perspective on suicide um, was looked at as well, and the emphasis on collective effort to repair the dynamic social fabric of Māori cultural connectedness. So our shared sense of belonging, forget the quick fix short term stuff, and uh, we need a sustained prevention, intervention, and healing process grounded on tikanga, uh, grounded on our original instructions as human beings and our connectedness through whakapapa that affirms the value of human life. So this project has affirmed um, that for Taranaki, the answers lie within, and it's time to remember that our tūpuna laid before us grounding principles that, are, that reassure us um, that in surviving genocide that took place in Taranaki, we are the seeds from Lingi Atea and we will continue. The, um, these are some tools that were developed from within uh, the, the project uh, around reframing the S. There was some, you know, sorry, sad in that, and it needs rehabilitating uh, and remove and moved back to the sacred. And the other tools are action tools that we currently use within our um, Arno assessments. So this is how do we do it? How do we get here? Of course, with our Waka Hauru. So that's um that's me, Kahu. And here's our contact uh, um, website, and we will be releasing the report uh, in November. Oh, um, great to hear that uh, in terms of looking within ourselves are the answers and certainly um, the discussion around leadership leadership oh, yeah. and leadership of our tani. Um so have you uh, have you got any um, forward looking in terms of um, Tāne together within Taranaki, and uh, there are, I know, some develops, developments in other rohe around that. Have you have uh, Tūtama Wahine particularly thought of what, what, could, what could happen in the Tāne space? Well, the, the Taranaki Māori Women's Network uh, that um, 
are supporting the hapu at Manukurihi in Otarawa in relation to um, asking for those, those stolen lands to be returned to the hapu without um, strings attached uh, is another forum uh, in which we can be doing things. Taranaki Māori Horns Network um, is, has got uh, some plans in relation to addressing the, uh, their own hapu. But there, um, we do have a plan uh, in relation to how we can inter con start interconnecting um, the kaupapa, because it's clear they're saying uh, that um, this actually should not be health driven, this should be Māori driven from within the community. And it's about um, connecting up hapu and other collectives within the, the Māori community to feel that they can again um, recognise and address what is happening. So we do do have, we don't have time to talk about it, kahu, but um, no doubt I will um, speak with you when I see you in a, a month or so uh, about that other, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so um, I'm going to report uh, in November and make it available for people. There is no, there is no uh, Māori um, information in relation to suicide that's a published report as far as I can tell. There's a little bit, uh, Te Rangihiro touches in it in uh, his writings on the coming of the Māori, but there's no document that is Taranaki specific done by Taranaki researchers about Taranaki. And I think that's the, the strength of this, that if, um, if people want to be doing other plans in relation to Taranaki, so Māori, so they actually should be looking at the report. And they, they can't say that they have got no, uh, yeah, there's, no, there's nothing there. There is something there now. Yes. And, and thank you to Wakahodua, really, for what making that possible. Yes. And, and I know people are interested too in contacting you, so thank you for your details that you've given us today. And um, we've also briefly mentioned or briefly discussed the possibility of some uh, international journal articles that you are thinking of publishing in the future. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, I, I suppose before I I finish, I need to acknowledge Leone, who was our, our overseer, um, Dr. Janice Wynn, who also provides supervision for myself, and Afina and uh, Jocelyn Millard for their support during the other uh, research and getting the report up, as well as to yourself on Boka Hauru. Kia ora. Thank you. Mm -hmm. no Mato or the Wakahodu, uh, Māori and Pacifica Suicide Prevention, Kotene uh, Temeturua, Kooti Taranine, Mihiatu Kiokoto, Titiro Mai, Fakarongo Mai, Kinga Kodiro, Tutamawahine, and Naropi Ma, Iroto Taranaki. So thank you for joining us again for our webinar series, um, and I'm sure uh, you, you will find interest too in the documents that. Uh, that Nairobi and her team have have produced as part of the research for Wakahodua and access that from um, your website, Tutama Wahina website, and maybe the Wakahodua website as, as well. And uh, looking forward to, um, we have video reminded everyone, we have videoed this, so it will also be on a link available to go back to over the next um, Thank you.